Welcome to Skill Session. We're running a UML series and we're starting out with the context diagram because the context diagram is where it all begins. It's where you figure out what exactly the landscape looks like around the application that you're going to build. So consider if you're building a house. You're not just going to start building a house without considering where that house is going to be. So I'm not even just talking about not putting it in the middle of the ocean or putting it in the middle of the field where there are no roads connecting to it. You need infrastructure. You need a road. You need electrical. You need water supply. You need heating supply. You need those things. You need to figure out what the exact context is. And I'm, saying you, I'm not saying that you cannot build a house in the middle of nowhere. Of course you can. But if there's no electrical grid, then you need to find a solution to it. Whereas if there is uh, an electrical grid, then you don't need to worry about it. Then you need to worry about connecting to it instead. Right? So you have these different things that you need to consider in your application. And they're really, really basic for the whole way that you're going to build the application. So it's the first thing that you're going to try and work out when you want to figure out what your software application is going to look like. So that's the idea of a context diagram. You can look at it like, uh, you know, uh, an infrastructure plan of the city, like an overview, like a street map, or like an, a map of the electrical grid or whatever grid it is that you need to connect to, right? So. Let's uh, try and build an example of what this might look like if we're building a new system for libraries to lend out books. And we're going to use that example throughout these videos of how to use UML. I'm using diagrams.net to draw these diagrams. I'm, I'm doing that for two different reasons. First of all, it's an online tool, just works in a browser. You don't have to install anything and you can just collaborate with your peers in it until you have the diagrams that you need. The other reason is, that it has a bunch of um, templates in it that upholds what exactly a diagram should look like in different cases. So that's why I'm using it. So I'm just going into the URL, I'm hitting the start button, clicking create new diagram. And even though they do have a bunch of templates for a lot of different things, as far as I know, context diagrams isn't one of them. So I'll just select a blank diagram and I'll call it context library context dot draw io and I'll hit create. Now it's going to ask me where I want to put that file and I'll uh, put it right here. I'll make a folder for it, UML tutorials, and I'll call it context library or library context. Like I said uh, back here before, save and now it's open. So when I'm building my diagram here, I'm just going to use some simple squares. And then I'm going to write a system like this, just to make sure that everyone who sees this diagram can immediately see that this is a systems diagram, because everything we're going to draw in here is actually going to have that text on it. And then underneath it, <clears throat> I'm going to write what the exact system is. And I might as well just start with my own system, right? So the library system. So what exactly would this library system need? Well, it might need some kind of, uh, of a login system, some kind of an external SSO system, single sign-on system, like an Active Directory, uh, ADFS from Microsoft, or something like that. It might need to uh, connect to, let's say there's a, a public library system, public library system. It might need to connect to um, to some kind of uh, ebook platform. And you know there could be there could be other things that I'm forgetting right now. Like for instance, a um, an invoicing system. Or, or just a, a general bookkeeping system. And then of course, the whole lending of books and registration of books and all of that, that's gonna take place inside of this system, but we're gonna draw that afterwards. This is like the infrastructure. So we need to connect to this uh, ebook platform. We need to connect to this, uh, and actually this, there's not any arrows on this. And we need to connect to the single sign-on system. We need to connect to the uh, public library system. And we need to connect to this uh, bookkeeping system in order to send invoices to people who are not handing back their books on time. And we could 
uh, potentially draw more lines, you just say, but we're actually using the same single sign-on system as the public library system. So they're already connected. Um, there might be uh, uh, a good chance that, that it's also connected to this uh, ebook platform. So let's draw, <laughs> drag these around a bit and of course make things a little bit prettier. Um, here we go. If we just drag it into the center here, then it's going to draw the lines uh, automatically. So there we go. And that way we can see that this SSO system is not only something that we use, it's, uh, it's also something that is used by other systems within the same infrastructure. So we use this single sign-on login system that is the same that's being used by the public library system and the ebook platform. So the idea here is that the users who can lend books at our library are users in the public library system and are users in the ebook platform. Uh, and because of all that, we can we can take a look at this sign on system and see if it's the same user. So we might be able to get some information about the user from the other systems, even without knowing who they are. And then in our bookkeeping system, well, we probably don't need to have them in there because that's that's more of an internal thing that you need, right? So that would actually be enough for a context diagram. In the next video, we're going to dive more into the component diagram, which is going to take that central component that's our own application and break that apart into bigger chunks that we can work with separately. So I'll link that video right here, right now, so you can jump directly to it, or you can use one of the playlists that I've created for it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the other video.